And now we have the next topic, magnetic field. In this video, we take a look at magnetic force. We are all familiar with what a magnet is. You have refrigerator magnets, horseshoe magnets, bar magnets, and so on. Objects that attract and repel other magnets and attract iron and similar metals. Just like an electric charge, just as an electric charge produces electric field in the surrounding space, and it is the electric field that applies the electrostatic force, a magnet produces a magnetic field in the surrounding space, and it is this magnetic field that applies the magnetic force. Applies the magnetic force on other magnets. They will either repel the other magnets or attract the other magnets. So again, a magnet produces a magnetic field in the surrounding space which applies the magnetic force on the other magnets. Refrigerator magnets are examples of permanent magnets. Magnets that are magnet simply because of the material that they are made out of. Permanent magnets have two poles, just like an electric charge has two polarity, positive and negative polarity. A permanent magnet has two poles, a north pole or N pole, and a south pole or S pole. And similar, similar poles repel each other, while opposite poles attract each other. A magnet has two poles. It has north pole and has south pole. The poles are always in pair, always in north-south pairs. So depending on the orientation of the magnets, the magnets will either repel each other or attract each other. Similar poles will attract each other while opposite poles will attract each other. Now, it has been observed that a moving charge is affected by a magnetic field, while a stationary charge is unaffected, which means a stationary charge is not a magnet, whereas a moving charge may be considered as a type of magnet. Basically, what we refer to as an electromagnet. Of course, electromagnets, you have more complicated devices that count as electromagnet, but at the very basic, we may consider a moving charge as an electromagnet. As long as the charge is moving, it will be considered as a magnet. It will be affected by an external magnetic field. The magnetic field will apply magnetic force on the moving charge, which means a moving charge also produces a, its own magnetic field in the surrounding space since it is a, or at least it is being considered as a magnet. As a magnet, it produces magnetic field in the surrounding space, whereas a stationary charge does not produce a magnetic field in the surrounding space. It only produces electric field in the surrounding space. A moving charge will produce both electric field and magnetic field in the surrounding space. Again, because a moving charge may be considered as a type of magnet. So consider a charge Q0 traveling through a region under a magnetic field B. So our magnetic field variable is capital B. It's a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. 
the direction of this magnetic field for this particular situation is indicated as shown. The charge Q0 is traveling through this region wherein you have the magnetic field B, external magnetic field B. Q0 is traveling with velocity V, the angle between V and the external magnetic field. The angle between them is angle phi. Since you have a moving charge, you have a magnet. The magnetic field B will apply force on the moving charge Q0. The force applied by the magnetic field on the moving charge is given by F is equal to Q0 V cross B cross product or vector product. So please review in your vector analysis or vector algebra. Please review vector product or cross product. Cross product is vector multiplication multiplying two vectors together and the answer is a vector quantity. F is equal to Q naught V cross B. B is the external magnetic field as already mentioned. Unit of magnetic field is Newton per ampere meter. This is given its own unit, Tesla, capital T. We also have Gauss or Gauss. One Gauss is 1 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. F is the force applied by the magnetic field on charge Q naught. V, of course, is the velocity of the charge Q naught. Again, please review cross product or vector product in your vector analysis. Suffice it to say that vector product will give you the following magnitude for the magnetic force. F is equal to absolute value of Q naught, magnitude of V times magnitude of V times sine of the angle between V and V, sine of angle V. Q naught is inside absolute value because we're talking about magnitude of the vector magnitude of force, and magnitude should always be positive. And since charge may be negative or positive, to get rid of any negative sign, we put the charge Q0 inside the absolute value. Magnitude of force is equal to absolute value of Q0 times magnitude of V times magnitude of B times sine of angle V. For the direction of the magnetic force, use your right hand rule. Again, use right hand rule for the direction of the magnetic force. Right hand rule of cross product. So again, I can't state that enough. Please review your vector product or cross product in your vector analysis. Right hand rule, put simply, take your right hand. Your thumb represents the first vector in the multiplication. The first vector is the velocity. So take the thumb of your right hand, align it with the velocity V. And the rest of your fingers, align it with the direction of the magnetic field B, the second vector. So thumb, rest of your fingers. The direction of your palm, the palm of your right hand, will be the direction of the magnetic force. Right hand rule. When applying the right hand rule for this equation, F is equal to Q naught V cross B, bear in mind that the vector product F should be perpendicular to the two vectors that we are multiplying. So in applying the right hand rule, Bear in mind that the magnetic force should be perpendicular to the velocity of the charge and perpendicular to the external magnetic field. A constant magnetic field is one that has constant magnitude and constant direction. doesn't matter 
where you look inside the magnetic field, you'll find the same magnitude and direction. A constant magnetic field is referred to as uniform magnetic field. Suppose we have a uniform magnetic field and this magnetic field is perpendicular to the velocity of the charge. This will cause the charge to move in a uniform circular motion. So let the magnetic field be constant. Let B be a uniform magnetic field. And say, for the sake of our discussion, let the magnetic field be heading into the board or into the screen. And the charge Q0 with mass M, the charge Q0 is moving along the plane of the board or plane of the screen. As such, the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The magnetic field will apply a force on the moving charge. This force will cause the charge to move in a circular motion. To be more precise, the object, the charge, will move in uniform circular motion. Constant, radius. The radius is given by mv over q naught b. For uniform circular motion, the time for one circle or the period of the circular motion, the period is constant. The period T is given by 2 pi m over q naught b. And period, time for one circle, circle, the inverse of the period gives you the frequency of the circular motion. T is 2 pi m over q naught b, thus f is equal to q naught b over 2 pi m. And angular frequency is simply frequency expressed in terms of radians per second. So you have omega, angular frequency omega, is equal to 2 pi f, which gives you q naught b over m. So again, r is the radius of the circular motion, t is the period of the circular motion, f is the frequency of the circular motion, and omega is the angular frequency or angular speed of the circular motion. And m is mass of the particle with charge Q naught. If we are to add a component to the velocity of the charged particle that is parallel to the magnetic field, the charge will move in a helical path. Say, we give the charged particle a push into the board, a direction that is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, we are giving the charged particle a component, a velocity component that is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. As such, the charged particle will not only move in a circular motion, it will move in a circular motion at the same time moving into the board the charged particle will move in a helical motion. If seen from the side view, instead of the charged particle just moving in a circular motion as such, the charged particle will also move forward. The charged particle will move in a helical motion. The charged particle will take on a helical path. This concept of a charge undergoing circular motion in a magnetic field, in particular in a uniform magnetic field, has been used in cyclotrons and synchrotrons, what we may refer to as particle accelerators. So if you are interested in looking up one application of a charged particle undergoing circular motion in a magnetic field, you may look up the concepts of cyclotrons and
synchrotrons or particle accelerators. And that's it for now. That's it for our discussion on the magnetic force. We'll continue our discussion on magnetic field in the next video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the concept of the current carrying conductor. So again, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.